Okay, so now that the set is pretty much working, what comes next? Well, as I mentioned, the glass is scraped, and thank you for the comments about how to deal with scratch glass. I may give that a try with buffing these out. Uh, but I do need a new cabinet, so for the next few months at least, I'm just going to hold off on doing anything major in the hopes that a set that has a better cabinet but maybe a bad picture tube shows up and I can swap some stuff out between them. But there is one thing I want to deal with and that is this cabinet uh, to improve its structural integrity. I cleaned it up and it looks okay, but underneath it's cracked pretty bad around both feet in the front. See those cracks in there? So I want to take the set apart and use some epoxy to strengthen that up, maybe sand it smooth, and then maybe spray a little paint on. I also went over the sides a bit and cleaned it up. It's a little rusty in here in these slats. So maybe I could uh, take a wire brush, clean out these slats, get a little rust remover on there, and then maybe just spray it with some primer and some semi-gloss black paint, something like that. This trim, uh, it's some type of really thin sheet metal that was chrome plated at some point, and that chrome plating is in just miserable condition. This stuff is held on by some tabs that go through slots in the cabinet here and there, and it's bent over on the other side. So I could take this off, and I suppose paint it silver, but again, I think I'll hold off on that until, well, hopefully another cabinet shows up. What bugs me more than anything is up here where the logo is. It should say something like Philco Town and Country on and through here. So you can see that's the residue of the glue from the strip that went in here. And similarly there was a logo down here on the plastic cover which I still have off the set. There's another bit of plastic that goes around through here. Sort of a bezel. I've taken this set apart yet again so I can both spray on a new conductive coating and repair some damage to the plastic here. There are a couple points that take a lot of stress on this cabinet which are the two feet. This one broke off entirely. It should go on like so. And then this one on the other side has also cracked quite a bit. So I am going to use this epoxy formulated for plastic. I've used it a few times before, it seems to work quite well. So mix up a bit on this old CD jewel case, get some toothpicks, apply it on there and it sets up fairly quickly, in about 20 minutes. I popped the picture tube out of the cabinet and removed all traces of the old conductive coating and now I'm getting ready to mask it off and then I'll spray on the slip plate. And then you can really get a good idea of just how shallow this picture tube is. I finished masking off the CRT Shaking up the can of slip plates. Okay, we're good to go. It says the usual instructions like for spray paint. Shake it well, hold it about a foot away from the surface, keep the can moving. Uh, looks like it's dry to tap free in 30 minutes. And it's recommended you wait at least four hours before using it. not what I expected at all. I just need a little tough spray. Uh, I don't think I this can up well enough. It's coming out kind of just like uh, a white gooey liquid. I thought it would be, look, look like black spray paint. I bought this can probably six months ago. It 
There we go. Okay, it's definitely better. I'm going to give it a few spurts to clean out the, uh, the valve and stuff. This is basically just graphite with some type of medium to keep it bonded to the glass and uh, to itself. It's been about six hours and this coating has set up pretty hard. Now I want to test it. I went around to a couple of my sets and measured the resistance on the original coating on the pitcher tubes and I was finding around 5 kilo ohms if I put the probes about 8 inches apart. So if I do the same on this coating I hope to get a similar reading. So pick a point here and say over here. 6.75, 5K there, so maybe slightly higher, but uh, I think that'll be all right, 6K. K, 5K, all right, so yeah, it's in the same ballpark as what the original coating has, so I think this will work out just fine. I was about to put the set back together when I got to thinking that I could spruce it up a little bit without too much effort. So I gave this part a light sanding and then some rusty metal primer because it was quite rusty down here. And then I sprayed it with a semi-gloss black. This outside surface actually has kind of a Tolex type coating, thin plastic coating that gives it kind of this rough appearance. I just painted right over that and it seemed to come out just fine. Which leaves the trim pieces which originally were some type of thin metal that was chromed and that chrome plating is just in miserable condition. So I went back and forth on what to do about it. Oh, it's also dented here and there. Uh, what I decided in the end is I'm going to rough up the surface with some 320 grit spray on some primer and then spray it with some silver metallic spray paint because uh, this is just pretty bad and uh, I'm not going to pay money to have, try to have this re-chrome that's for sure because my real goal of course is to find an entire cabinet that's in better condition and just trans, uh, transplant the chassis from this set into that cabinet Well, it may not be chrome, I think this looks a heck of a lot better than it did before. Now, once I got the picture tube remounted, I realized that I could actually spray on a bit more of that slip plate coating here and over here, so I touched up those corners, and now I'm getting ready to test the capacitance again. So what I've done is I've clipped one lead to the high voltage connector and the other one to this ground frame. You can also just touch this probe anywhere on the coating. Just be aware that it's pretty easy to scratch off. I've scuffed it a bit here. So I've got my capacitance bridge warmed up. Now before I got about 850 picofarads, which was the low end of the specifications, which were 800 to 1400. Let's see where we're at now. Let's see, it's peaking. Full eye right about there which is uh, I think it's about uh, a thousand picofarads I do believe so I had another 150 picofarads just by touching up those corners alright so that's well within the uh, 
specification range there. So I'm going to continue to reassemble this set. I'm just about done reassembling the set and I wanted to do a power up test before I put the back cover back on and happy to say this set's working just fine. One last thing I wanted to do before putting the backpack on the set was to hook up a test pattern generator see if the set needs any tweaking and I gotta say it's pretty darn good. I figured at the very least the vertical linearity would be off but uh, well, not really. Alright, so that's the crosshatch pattern. And uh, for the heck of it, I will try tweaking the vertical linearity. Well, I made it worse. And, uh, it's going too far the other way. So, yeah, right about where it already was, I'd say, is pretty darn good. Horizontal linearity isn't too bad either, which is good because there's really no adjustment for that. Here's some of the test patterns this thing can produce. There's a dot, so you use that for converging a color TV, color bars, uh, and then this multiburst, which is a way to determine quickly uh, what kind of bandwidth you've got. Ideally, you'd see vertical stripes all the way over to the far right, uh, but you really, you're not going to see that in a TV because uh, I think that goes up to like 4.5 or 5 megahertz on the far right, and because these sets were designed after the introduction of color TV, they somewhat limited the bandwidth. So you to I think below 3.5 megahertz or so to prevent the color burst carrier of 3.58 megahertz from messing up the picture. So I'll be right about there, I'd say. All right, so it seems to be working fine. I'm going to go ahead and button this set up as best I can. I died about three o'clock this morning in bed alone. No food, no drink, no way for a killer to get into the room. And finally, here's the set all back together. Toothpaste? We checked. Hooked up to uh, an over the air digital converter box. Uh, uh, not since Russia and the United States signed a pact to ban overground testing has a bomb of such magnitude been detonated. <laughs> you want to hear more? Brigades, our patrol is tracking them. My commander sent me to report. Let us hope that your so that'll be it for now. I'll certainly be on the lookout for a better cabinet. The most notable damage, of course, is the cracked bezel and a big chunk missing along the bottom, but otherwise, it's not too bad. Oh, man, yeah, I'm missing knobs. Although, I suppose I can dig through my spare knob box and find three that are functional. And then it's missing the trim up here with the logo. Same down here. But eh, otherwise, I'm going to call this done for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this little series on restoring a Philco Town & Country set from the early 60s.